www Fly Corvair. Welcome back. Today's message from January 2020 is an update on Stromberg carburetors. If you get information from me on Stromberg carburetors prior to this date, uh, please keep in mind that this is an update in the most current information that we have on them. Here is a workhorse carburetor. This is a Stromberg NAS3, one of the most uh, prolific light aircraft carburetors of all time. For my 30 years of working with Corvairs, we have used these carburetors relentlessly, and we even developed a special jetting for it that works really, really well on Corvairs. What has changed over time that makes me not recommend this carburetor has nothing to do with the carburetor itself. The situation has changed on the availability of parts and the quality of rebuilds on these carburetors. The pricing on these carburetors used to be very, very affordable. When we first got started with this, this carburetor usually could be had for two or three hundred dollars and a rebuild kit was about a hundred fifty bucks and you could be set up with a pretty good setup. This requires a primer and the primers that we used to use with aircraft grade fittings used to be in the category of oh, uh, seventy five or a hundred bucks and they were quite frequently found at fly marts for fifteen or twenty dollars used to be a good economical setup. Over years, decades even, times have changed. The most significant change is we've had a year's worth of testing on this, testing carburetors in the field and found out there are huge variations in the carburetors that builders are using on these. Some of these variations are very, very significant to the operation of the aircraft. These variations can cause detonation and that's unacceptable. Here's the test results from a year's worth of data gathered by Dan Sheridan and myself here on fully instrumented engines. We have all the technical data for this carburetor. Again, when it's right, it works great. But modern rebuilds on these are being done with parts and part sets that are no longer of perfect aircraft quality. This particular carburetor belongs to Thomas Klepper. It was built exactly according to the book and it did not run well. We took it apart and carefully measured the brand new jet on it and it was not correct. So when new parts are being delivered in bags from known suppliers and they are not correct, it's impossible to recommend this to a home builder and have him put it on his airplane and not understand why it does not run correctly. Again, the system has uh, bogus parts in it now and the rebuilds on these have gotten very very expensive. There are two main rebuilders, one who's done a lot of good work for us but recently had some problems and there's a nationally known distributor who mostly functions uh, towards certified versions of this. This is a very expensive carburetor when it comes from either one of those sources. We've tested both of their configurations uh, and we've found defects in these. So. Uh, will you look at it and say, well, if the jetting is just all there, how could there be a problem? I'll give you an example of an unknown, uh, unforeseen uh, example. We had a carburetor that ran perfectly on the test stand, instrumented for digital air fuel meters, laboratory grade equipment, tested perfect, ran all the way up to uh, 2800 RPM, perfectly fine, right on the money air fuel wise. Perfect. You could have put it on an airplane and thought this is great. On the test stand, we can take carburetors and engines running up into the 3000s. Up above that level, the carburetor experienced a severe lean-out that led straight into detonation. The lean-out was caused because the float didn't have enough dropout in it, and at really high fuel flow, like a takeoff setting, the scenario was the needle and seat feeding fuel to the float bowl became the new restriction and therefore the jet limit on it. That carburetor installed on an airplane would have leaned out and detonated on the first wide open sustained climb. To avoid having anybody have an issue like that, we have a new program and the program is if you have one of these things and it's flying on your airplane and it works, good, that's one category. A different category is if you have one of these and they've been rebuilt and it's been rebuilt and you don't know how well it runs or how accurately it was done. Uh, over this year, I'd like you to send it in to me and we'll go through uh, testing and 
at a very modest cost compared to the, getting the carburetor uh, originally set. I want to test your carburetor, include it in the documentation. If it's got a small error inside, I can correct it fairly easily. Uh, but we want to verify before you fly it that it does not have this type of uh, uh, mistake inside. Again, there's some that will run pretty darn good on the ground for ground running, but they would have trouble in the air. And with uh, a year's worth of experience uh, of testing uh, a dozen of these things and correcting them, and looking at lots of variations to it, uh, we're in a pretty good uh, position to spot this type of stuff long before it causes anybody trouble. The third category is you haven't got a carburetor yet. If you haven't got a carburetor yet, really uh, uh, I have to recommend to people that, uh, that this is no longer an idealized baseline carburetor. Carburetor is no different. But the scenario that we're working with them in is, the scenario is spare parts and the availability of uh, quality rebuilds on these things. Uh, that's the problem. Uh, the, uh, uh, so I want to steer people to our, towards a different carburetor, and I'll address that in another video. But I want to take a look at this and alert everybody to this that I am, even though I never sold these things originally, we just merely recommended the model and I didn't create the problem. I'm here to solve it for Corvair builders. So if you have one of these things, it's really important that you send it in to me and let me get a look at it. If you got one flying on an airplane, let's get on the phone and have a powwow and compare notes on this stuff because I want to make sure that from here forward, the fleet of these things is either perfectly well prepared or we give you a better choice for a carburetor. Thanks very much. If you like this type of content, please remember to subscribe and check the links in the description for further text on this.